This is Fisher Frying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250 DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's newsletter. As promised, I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter. In the shop, we've been working steadily on completing kits on the production board. And we'd like to thank the following customers for their recent purchases. Todd Heimer, an FP202 fuselage kit. Joey Simpson bought a mug from our web store, as did Ian Hubert, uh, videos and construction books. Nicholas Dixie from the UK bought v Avenger plans. Uh, Joel Calhoun, a Tiger Moth cowl. Josh Power, a Tiger Moth tail kit. And Alvin Schwamm bought Dakota Hawk plans. We'd like to thank everyone for purchasing from us, and uh, we really appreciate it. In the next segment, I'm going to talk about the SF-1 Archon. I have a list of 10 questions and answers that I'm going to share with you about the aircraft. And uh, if we don't have uh, the question that you have on this list, then by all means, leave them in the comments section below, and we'll get to them in a subsequent video. I have the retail pricing put together for the SF-1 Archon to share with you. And Algie Yates is back with his third installment of his Youngster Tail Kit build. Algie has uh, been very generous in allowing us to share his build with you at the same time. And I edit his uh, length, uh, usually to try to keep my videos a little bit shorter. Um, but we are now posting all of his uh, videos uh, on a playlist uh, so that you can go and watch them in their entirety. So here we go. We're going to talk about the SF-1 Archon. And now we're going to go through the 10 most asked questions so far about the SF-1 Archon. First question I get a lot, asked a lot is, are, do they come with a bubble canopy? I think that uh, most pilots would like to not have the, uh, the framework around them. Um, yes, it's possible and we can order them with it. We're going to be providing probably mostly bubble canopies over here in North America. Um, but yes, I've been told that it's possible. Second question, is it LSA compliant? Um, this aircraft meets the LSA compliance rules for a sport pilot certificate to be able to fly, but uh, um, we're looking in the future of providing LSA aircraft, um, but these will likely have to be built as uh, experimentals to begin with. Uh, one thing is that the LSA, you can have retractable gear, and so you would have to fly it as a fixed gear variant to, to fly it with a sport pilot license. Um, what engines are compatible with this design? Um, the air, airframe is designed around the, uh, the 582 Rotax, uh, liquid cooled. Um, it can take a, you know, a 912 ULS, 100 horsepower and, and, and higher. Uh, the, the engines behind the pilot, it's after the CG, so adding a little more weight there isn't a problem, like it would be putting it on the nose. And so uh, the, uh, there is a varied range of engines that would be able to um, fit in that aircraft, but it's being offered with 582 and uh, 912 UL, 912 ULS uh, to begin with. Uh, what's the mechanism for the retractable gear? Uh, the retractable gear works, um, uh, I believe, and again, I've got to confirm this, but uh, it's working with linear actuators, and so it's a double electric system, I believe. Um, can you carry baggage? Uh, yes, uh, there is uh, one cubic foot of baggage space behind the pilot, and um, there's some more baggage space above the front nose gear, uh, retractable area in the in the nose of it so um, there is provision there I've had somebody ask me whether or not they could uh, take their airplane out and go to their buddies and go shooting and take a long gun with them and and uh, so we're looking into that for sure but I believe there's enough room in the nose to be able to put that uh, to create a compartment in the nose above the above the gear uh, what's its top speed um, the VNE for the aircraft is uh, 
155 mile an hour. Uh, it cruises at um, uh, 110, 112, maybe a little above that. Um, its maneuvering speed is 93 miles per hour, and the flap extension, max flap extension speed is 81 miles per hour, and it stalls at 61, or sorry, 41 miles per hour. So it's got a really nice slow stall. Uh, what's that thing? Is that a wing below on the bottom? And yes, it is. In that pass through area where the air goes through to the propeller, the lower section where the gear is attached to is actually wing shaped and uh, creates lift. The, uh, the, the, the angled section of what looks like the F 22 intake uh, are also um, airfoil shaped. And um, so, therefore, as you're turning, um, you know, the bottom wing's creating lift, the side pieces are creating lift. And uh, it, it, uh, it provides a nice uh, lifting environment for, the higher, for a higher rate turn. Uh, you don't run into the stall problems. And uh, as well, when you're coming into land, it's very docile. Um, you can see in some of the videos where the, the pilot rides a wheelie down the runway for quite a distance. It has a lot of, a lot of lift down to a very slow speed. Um, is it all made from aluminum? Yes. The aircraft is completely made from aluminum sheet. It's a monocoque design. Um, it's all riveted together. Uh, we're looking at into having uh, the uh, the components made with um, with dimple dies so that uh, we pre dimple for uh, flush rivets possibly. So that's going to be interesting to see if we can do that. And um, the last question number ten: When can I get a kit? Um, the kits are available right now. Uh, we have been working with uh, G Aerosports uh, to launch this. Uh, they're ready to build kits right now. And, uh, you know, it's a limited production over from Greece. Uh, but uh, uh, if we put it, if, you, if you're interested in ordering one right now, we're about to order one for building ourselves uh, to document the build and to work out all the documentation for the North American market. So um, if you want to save some money on shipping and whatnot, then we can get uh, a couple of three kits uh, over here at the same time. So I'm going to run through the SF1 Archon price list with you that we've just put together so that everyone understands uh, how affordable these aircraft are going to be. The basic kit, which includes all the necessary parts and components to build the complete airframe. It contains all the materials to build the fuselage wings with flaps and ailerons, has two 12.6 gallon wing tanks and one 2.1 gallon header tank, uh, has struts with aerodynamic profiles, twin fins and rudders, fixed landing gear, which is upgradable to retractable. Uh, standard canopy, flap controls, stick and rudder pedals, all the necessary rivets, clecos, and bolts, washers, nuts, control cables, pulleys, and turnbuckles. All parts are pre-cut, pre-drilled, and pre-welded as needed. Now this kit, this basic kit is $17,495 plus shipping. Now the basic kit with retractable gear adds another $2,000 to that. So there's the mechanism that goes in uh, and makes the kit a retractable unit. And on top of that, the bubble canopy with retractable gear uh, is uh, 21495 Now we're going to be putting together a quick build version of this kit. Uh, where we've determined how much we're going to have pre-built and whatnot. And so that this takes the basic kit and transforms it into uh, an assembly process where the, the kit uh, is built to the very edge of the 51% compliance rule. And, um, and that's $34,950. Now, the aircraft is going to be offered with three different engine packages. Um, we've got a complete 582 UL 64 horsepower water-cooled engine with the engine mount, exhaust, radiator, propeller, and spinner, wiring and switches to, to install the engine. So basically it's a firewall rearward engine package for $11,000. The firewall rearward engine package 2, which is the 912 UL 80 horsepower with all the associated things as well, is $29,000. And the firewall rearward engine package number three, which is the 912 ULS, 100 horsepower, is 33.5. Now, we're going to be offering, there's a Talos, uh, Alos, EFIS system with engine monitoring and switches and airframe electrics. Uh, we haven't determined a pricing on that yet, but that's going to be available as well. We're going to be putting a Dynan system that's together that basically it's built right into the panel. It's all ready to go. Um, we know a lot of people want to buy these as almost ready to fly as well. So um, through our builder assist packages, we're going to be able to provide an aircraft that is pretty much ready to go. Uh, the ARF 582, 65 horsepower is 54,450. 
The ARF 912 UL 80 horsepower package is 74 450, and the 912 ULS 100 horsepower package is 78 450. So this gives you an idea on what kind of pricing that we're going to be um, charging for the kits. But as you can see, the basic kit is is quite reasonable. Um, it's even quite reasonable with the with the landing gear and the bubble canopy. Um, and uh, we think that uh, it fits well into the market at this price point. So without ado, I'm going to pass you on to Algie Yates with his uh, uh, Youngster uh, Tail Kit and Continuation to Part 3 of the build. Take it away, Algie. So in this video, I'm going to cut and fit some W7 wood in here on the leading edge uh, of the tailplane. We will be working back along the... Uh, spar side we'll fit the spar and hopefully we'll get to fit the ribs and all the blocks that is the plan for this session so uh, please join me as we move along all right so fill this block here well, i'm just going to use a piece of card as a template nothing particularly high tech here i'm just going to slip that underneath make the trailing edge of that match up with the line on the plan. Push that down. I'm just going to round here with a pencil so we actually get a perfect fit I hope. And then uh, using a steel rule aligned with the edge of the rib there I can draw that. There we have a template section which I'll put on to the uh, W7 wood with a bit of double sided tape and then I'll cut that out with a jigsaw. I've sanded across the grain with uh, some coarse uh, sandpaper just to, just to roughen it up and to make sure that it uh, fits and to get rid of the saw marks back to the, the uh, cardboard so it's dead on absolutely spot there so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put a little mark on this side of the wood and a little mark on the other side there with that in position I'm just going to uh, transfer that line all the way up to the top yep. turn it over as I turn the uh, square over as well I'm using the lower side of this uh, piece as the datum so I've got that and then as we can see that the, the line that's coming through on both sides there I know that that's if I join those two up across there that's what I've got to cut off so that scrap I'll do the same at the other end and hopefully we'll get a nice perfect match I'll sand it if necessary just to make it a, a, a close fit not a tight fit we don't need to be wedging this in we just need to be a close fit so there's the end after cutting you still see a little bit of the pencil line and that should in at the other end on the line the other end and that just pushes in look nice and light very very slight I wouldn't say gap it's just it's just a close tolerance fit so absolutely spot on so here I am I'm just going to cut uh, cut a rib using the block I've just marked the total length just cutting it with my razor saw
putting it into position, lining it up with a square so that it's uh, on the line there. And I'll just mark on the other side. Draw that line across and then we'll sand it. So over on the bench here, I'll just make sure that that's square to the edge. The sanding block. see how lucky we've got. There you see the joint just there, everything's lined up. It's a very slight thing in the edge, it's no, no problem. We're going to end up with a gusset going over this lot. But that's sorted out and uh, just got to do all the other ribs. So all the ribs are cut and marked out and as you can see there's a whole series of blocks I'll talk about those a little bit more closely after I've bonded them in but there's about uh, half an hour's work on the ribs and nearly an hour's work going through all the blocks getting those cut so we've got the corner blocks ready to go next section will be gluing in all the ribs and I'll show you this after I've glued all the ribs into place Here we are, all the ribs glued into place. Just want to point out one or two things. So this block here, which is for the support that goes between the horizontal stabilizer or fixed tail plane uh, to the vertical stabilizer fin is, uh, is here. I've rounded this corner off just here to because the covering goes over it I don't like a sharp corner going against covering and then I've drawn on here the direction of grain uh, just to point some things out so the spar's got the grain going horizontally same as this the uh, rib has got the grain going vertically but the blocks all the triangular blocks have the grain going diagonally so that it's going from one piece of structure to the other straight across rather than being in a format like that or vertical where you could have a section of it shear out that makes the block a lot stronger so that concludes uh, this video in the next video we'll be looking at uh, how I deal with putting in the gussets so join me for that bye for now Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.